Hello everyone, and I'm going to talk about refeeding syndrome today. So, what is refeeding syndrome? Refeeding syndrome is an adverse effect of the body to the reintroduction of adequate calories after prolonged periods of malnourishment. This is a result of rapid shift in fluids and electrolytes. So what that means is um, two things of concern, three things, is that um, when somebody been starving for a long time, if we um, feed refeed them too quickly and uh, they'll have this um, fluids and electrolyte shift and this can cause um, serious complications so I will go on to talk about these uh, the mechanism behind this so let's start with glucose we obviously because we're talking about food so we need energy and glucose is the main source of energy so in the body uh, glycogen is um, our stored form of glucose and then when we need when we need it it is um, converted to glucose and then um, glucose can also get converted into pyruvate uh, and then the reverse can happen and so it's this nice balance keeps us um, keeps our body uh, maintain uh, normally and function normally now the conversion of glycogen glycogen into glucose it ha happens in the liver when there is a signals from glucagon uh, so the glucagon gives signal to the liver to produce uh, release glucose from glycogen so the body will have energy and when all of this is happening um, thiamine which is vitamin B1 um, helps with the conversion it's like a coenzyme a catalyst so it uh, helps uh, with these conversions and thiamine comes from our uh, main food, uh, and that's our main dietary uh, source. And vitamin B is uh, non-soluble, I mean, soluble in water, so we, we don't really store it. We have to keep eating to get uh, thiamine. And, and thiamine is also good, for, uh, important for nerve function, so um, you can already see there, uh, there could be a complication going on if something happens just a heads up so when you are malnourished what happens is uh, you don't have energy uh, you don't get that glucose intake so the body that what does is uh, increases glucagon uh, uh, secretion from the pancreas causing the liver uh, to convert glycogen to glucose and another thing is um, if you don't eat you don't get thiamine like I said it, we don't really store it in our body so we get a depletion of thiamine uh, from from our food, uh, not having enough food, and we get a deep usage of thiamine because we're using it to convert glycogen into glucose. So what does that mean? We get thiamine deficiency. And like I said, thiamine is important for nerve function. When you get thiamine deficiency, you get poor nerve function, and this can lead to what we call Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome. Uh, this Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome is actually um, two things and you got Wernicke's disease and Korsakoff syndrome uh, they're pretty much the same uh, Wernicke disease uh, causes nerve damage and that can be in the CNS or the PNS or peripheral nervous system Korsakoff syndrome also causes nerve damage and it's also associated with memory problems okay so when you're malnourished uh, obviously um, you don't have glucose so the body don't produce insulin to uptake which is or what happens you need glucose to be in circulation so insulin uh, doesn't get uh, secreted uh, so let's start talking about refeeding so when you refeed someone you give them food that's when you give them energy give them glucose so their glucose increases and then it can also get converted into pyruvate if you do this too much too quickly too much glucose and then some of that get converted to pyruvate and this conversion like I said before uh, uses thiamine and if we don't give them thiamine at the same time then we'll have that um, uh, that whole cascade here uh, get thiamine deficiency and then you get this Wernicke Korsakoff syndrome and if you give them glucose, the body then uh, too much, then the body starts secreting insulin. Okay. And now, uh, before I move on, what happens here? Let's talk about the other side of the story with the electrolytes. 
So in our body, there is phosphate, uh, magnesium, and potassium. Oh, well, concerning refeeding syndrome, these are the three electrolytes. Uh, phosphate is important for nerve function. Potassium is important for cardiac rhythm. Uh, I'm not sure what magnesium is used for. I, my research hasn't gone that far. So uh, excess is then secreted, uh, go to the kidney and get secreted. Uh, some of that is reabsorbed just to maintain good uh, range in our side body uh, back into circulation. So, uh, so now uh, let's go back to refeeding syndrome. When you have um, insulin, a lot of insulin produced, what it does is it shift all of these inside a cell. So phosphate, magnesium, potassium, shift them all inside a cell. And what does that mean? If you have, and if you shift all these magnesium inside. Um, electrolytes inside a cell, you got this um, uh, osmosis action where water then follows them inside a cell. So if you get water retention inside a cell, guess what? You get edema. And then if it's edema is in the lung, then you get pulmonary edema. And so patient can uh, feel hard to breathe and so on. And if you have a lot of electrolytes inside a cell, that leaves nothing outside a cell. So in the circulation, so you get extracellular depletion of electrolytes, okay? And that's mean like the heart can't get it, so you get problem with cardiac rhythm, and such as arrhythmia, hypotension, uh, cardiac and cardiac arrest. Um, and if there's not enough phosphate in circulation, then you can't get good nerve function, and then you get seizure and altered mental state. And that's pretty much it for the um, thing. Um, for refeeding syndrome.